With a fair few altcoins reaching new all-time highs and a few others starting to pump up, this has led to speculation as to whether or not the alt season has started. In this video, we're going to dive down into some charts, take a look at what is going on and try to answer that question, is this alt season? As we get into it, if you find it useful and informative, hit the like button, really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you'll be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right, with that said, done and out of the way, let's jump on down to the desktop and take a look at what is going on here with these altcoins. Okay, guys, so... Here we obviously are on coin market cap. Just want to kind of start here just to kind of give you a bit of an idea and a bit of an understanding as to why this is kind of being speculated right now across the space. Okay, so lots of different influencers, be this on Twitter or YouTube or whatever, are talking about, you know, maybe it's alt season now, right? And um, I'm not quite aligned to that theory. And I'll go through why I think this in a moment. But um, as you can see, right, we have Bitcoin relatively, you know, flat. It's at that 56K. It's been jumping around a bit, very choppy, very, um, I guess, uh, unknown. It's a bit confusing to a lot of people who may be not aware of what kind of patterns are showing and, and all that kind of stuff, right? And at the same time as that going on, you also have these altcoins that are, you know, be 4%, 18% or 13%. We obviously had um, e-gold, uh, you know, Elrond e-gold uh, spiking up nicely to over $500, new all-time highs and pulling back. Uh, we've got Harmony One right now at fourteen percent, right? Um, event Finance at eleven percent. For the for the most part, though, what I'm actually seeing here is money rolling around, right? We're at two point five trillion dollars, right? It's no new money, uh, and alt season is really about FOMO, okay? And it usually happens after uh, Bitcoin has reached some kind of uh, you know phenomenal high, okay? Significant new all-time high it peaks out and then bitcoin is done right um now we haven't seen that we've seen 67k get hit we saw a pullback we saw 69k get hit we saw a pullback and again with those values what we saw is they were hit right on the nail okay uh, which basically means that um it wasn't a penny over or a penny under it was exactly that pound or dollar value right that exact dollar value and then the reversal came in and we we fell right back and that is um interesting in itself i'm not, not going to go into it in too much detail but you could argue that large portions of a bitcoin was due to sell at a very specific price point and it was such a rounded number it was kind of obvious right and so we can we can acknowledge what was going on there. Um, so with Bitcoin, I think it's just been heavily kind of suppressed. There's obviously the eight hundred million dollar liquidation across the space, uh, and again, I feel still feel that is going on because uh, yeah, there's still some leverage positions. And you know why not uh, if you have the ability to do so, take that money off the off the table, right? So um, again, we don't use leverage. We would never uh, suggest using leverage or anything like that. Highly risky. And, um, you know, we just buy the assets, we hold them, we're in control of those assets. We, we can hold it if the market doesn't go in our favor, and we're okay with that. We'd never invest more than we can afford to lose, and uh, all that kind of good stuff that you usually hear in the space. It's very good and sound advice. Now, obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. Chris is not a financial advisor. We're not offering you financial advice, but what we are doing is communicating to you what we do and how we have been successful in this space, okay? It's all about the bear market, not the bull run. That is where you make your money. Okay, the bull run is just about two things. I say this all the time. It's about managing your expectations and managing your pr uh, uh, managing your emotions, right? Manage the price expectations, manage your emotions, and you're going to be okay in the bull run. Um, but in the bear market, that is where you actually make your money because you're building very, very solid positions in projects that have true utility uh, and are truly changing the world for the better. Um, and again, you're riding that wave from the bear market into the bull run, okay? And that is where the money is made. Okay, so, right. Enough of that. Um, so obviously we can see that Bitcoin's very choppy. It's been kind of trading uh, in these kind of low areas of the low 50s. 
um, and hasn't really done awfully too much, right? And obviously the altcoins have been relatively the same. They had huge pullbacks as well, but they got to a point where they needed to start pumping back up again because you cannot continue to correct down and have money just leave the space. Money eventually does have to come in, and specifically when you start seeing key levels get hit on these altcoins. So which is why you're seeing some pop higher than others. Now, I understand that there is the theory that uh, Ethereum has changed the market and again it's a theory nothing is ever proven here it's just a bunch of uh, of influencers who think you know this might be what's going on and that's perfectly fine everyone's allowed an opinion um and my opinion is i don't think ethereum is leading the altcoin space um you know correlations aren't exactly there either actually you can see the correlation between ethereum and uh, bitcoin quite nicely you can see it right here these two charts, they look very similar, right? So Bitcoin's leading Ethereum. Now you take a look at Solana, Solana doesn't look like these and take a look at ADA, it doesn't look like these either, right? So you can't say that Ethereum is leading the altcoin space when the patterns are not the same. Instead, they're running kind of independently, but they're running in, at least on the downside, they're correcting with these kind of um, ABC correction waves that are then resetting and correcting again. Okay, we're not going impulsive down, and that's the good news, meaning that we're still impulsive. Um, but we, uh, sorry, we're still in a bull run to the upside, um, and we're not impulsive down. We're just ABC reset, ABC reset, ABC reset, right? Um, and these altcoins you're seeing here, like Polkadot, that pattern there is very similar to Bitcoin. Um, XRP is not, obviously, with things that are going on there. We also have ADA, not. Uh, again, I think there's uh, things that are going on that are different with those two projects. Avalanche has been performing incredibly well. So again, fundamentally, it's different. And the other thing that we have to bear in mind is Ethereum, you know, it it's it's going to be struggling, right? And uh, there's a lot more smart contract platforms this time around, right? Uh, and there's a lot of older people who have been in the space or, you know, people who were maybe investing in Ethereum all during the bear market uh, who want Ethereum to do incredibly well, right? Um, because they've got huge positions in it. And it's the same thing with Solana, right? There's people who want Solana to do incredibly well because they've got huge positions in it. Um, but, you know, it's it's not something I'm going to forget that Solana had a switch that was flicked and it was turned off for a while, right? And Ethereum, well, it's in trouble because there's a lot more faster, more secure uh, smart chain platforms out there now, be that Solana, Cardano, Polkadot, Avalanche, uh, Algorand, Egold, Elrond, you know, you name it, there's a, there's a whole host of them, right? So unlike the previous times around, uh, Ethereum didn't have as much competition, right? So um, it's actually doing, I think Ethereum's doing well considering, but it's definitely not a good performer for the portfolio. Uh, and I do hold a little bit of Ethereum, I don't want to hate on it, I hold a little bit of Bitcoin, but they're both very, very poor performers for the portfolio from a percentage yield point of view, okay? Um, but are we in alt season? Getting back to the main question. Well, I don't think we are. And obviously, we've, we've had a look at Bitcoin overall uh, on the chart. And I'll do it again in a second. Um, but these altcoin patterns, you know, they are still very much aligned to, and you can see these three here, Stellar, VeChain, Hadira, Hashgraph, all three of those very, very similar. Here, we also have Zilliqa, Anchor, very similar patterns. Uh, moving on down a little bit these are still very similar patterns to what bitcoin is currently doing what ethereum is currently doing and what some of these other altcoins are doing right so um, we're still very much linked the money is just rolling around there are people frustrated in the space they're not seeing the percentage gains that that they think that they should be getting and this is the other other caveat that you have to kind of bear in mind there's that there's a lot of retail investors out there who think that because they've now invested in a coin that coin can go to the moon okay there's instant gratification or whatever they want to kind of call it it's effectively just gambling it's like uh putting the lottery ticket on and you know and on a very specific day you'll either know whether it's gone up or gone down right or you'll either know that you're a millionaire or you're not a millionaire uh, and that's pretty much the attitude of many retail investors okay but instead then they're not they're not investors they're just gambling they're just throwing money at things and now what they're doing is they're getting frustrated because their coins that they've chosen are not pumping and instead what they're doing is they're chasing the green candles and that's almost one way to get guaranteed wrecked um so you know that's what you're seeing here with a 2.5 trillion dollar market cap that's not moving the bitcoin and ethereum dominance is hovering around the very same kind of levels there's a little bit of fluctuation but it's not too much um, and the money is just rolling around into different altcoins it's leaving some going into others and the people are just trying to chase those green candles um but eventually when when bitcoin gets that's revert it gets its reversal when the confidence comes back in the space after this latest pullback after that 800 million dollar liquidation event we're going to start seeing 
you know, significant growth across the board again. And people who may have been moving out of certain projects are going to significantly regret it in the very near future, in my opinion. And Cardano is a good example of that. Uh, and actually, on that note, talking about eToro and obviously not being listed there along with Tron, I actually think that's a positive um, for the community of Aveda because, you know, eToro, uh, and unless it's changed recently, I haven't looked at it for, for a while, but, you know, they were offering leverage. Um, and again, I don't like leverage. I would never condone using leverage and all that kind of stuff. So um, Ada not being listed there, I think actually would probably be a good thing for Ada. But it wouldn't surprise me as well if uh, they're removing some competition and maybe they're heavily invested in something like Solana, for example. And by removing the competition, limiting investors' choices, etc. cetera, uh, something that we saw with Wall Street Bets and Wuthering Hood with... Um, GameStop, right? You could only sell GameStop but not buy it, right? The game is rigged on some of these platforms. So eToro, yeah, it doesn't bother me. It's not a platform I would ever use anyway. Um, and I think actually overall, I think it's pretty probably better for the ADA community that it's not listed there. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Um, and uh, let me know what your thoughts are on that one in the comments below. But it is what it is. Um, okay, so let's get into a few charts. Then. So here's Ethereum, right? Ethereum is pumping. Okay, it's going up, but it's all still choppy, right? It's definitely different to Bitcoin. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing some good growth to the upside. Now, this is a big ABC, right? We can see this here. It's still a corrective move up A, B and C. Okay, now in theory, we've started to see this pullback here. Um, is this actually the, the top of that C wave or is it uh, an area to pull back uh, or an area that we're going to continue growing to? Where did our C wave actually go, right? So if I actually take hold of this and we throw this on our B, um, yeah, that's pretty much come in, right? We'd expect it to have gone a little bit higher to about $5,000. But yeah, that's pretty much ABC move there for um for Ethereum, right? So again, now you're going to start seeing Ethereum correct down, right? We can see that it's going to be an ABC here. Okay, so here's your A. We'll get that B right now. We'll probably push a little bit higher, giving that stochastic, and then we'll pull back. Right? Okay, we'll pull, we'll pull back, and then um, at this point, we'll look for another ABC up. If I actually draw that properly, there we go. Okay, and again, we'll monitor that situation. There's no, we don't know where things are likely to go, how big those moves are likely to be, um, but we can measure this uh, this you know, wave down once we complete B, for example. So we know that there was a corrective pattern forming now for for Ethereum, right? So yes, it's enjoyed a big push to the upside. Um, we also have the same thing here with Elrond's E-Gold, right? Impulsive this time up, right? Impulsive up. Uh, one, two, three, four is where we are right now. And then we're looking for that fifth wave, right? So again, uh, we're, we've enjoyed that third push to the upside. Now we're going to be getting this A, B, and C correction. I reckon most probable it will come down to around that 442, um, which is be about a $100 drop, okay? Um, pretty significant if we actually grab the percentage point of view. Um, let me grab hold of that. Um, so we tap that price and we pull that down. You know, we're talking, yeah, 60, 17 or so percent drop. Um, so that would be complete in wave four, hopefully. And then we'll push on up into this fifth wave where we go up to some pretty good heights as well, right? Um, so are we in alt season? No, we're just following patterns that actually were started way back in October, right? And uh, I think, you know, Bitcoin will eventually also start its correction pattern. But we have to also acknowledge that there's a lot more uh, retail, uh, sorry, not retail, but in institutional investors and um you know, whales in Bitcoin that are happy to bring that price back down a bit and liquidate people because that's kind of what's been going on repeat for a while with Bitcoin. Um, but I'm still confident and I'll go into why that is in a moment. Uh, we also have uh, Harmony One, right? Very, very choppy, right? ABC down and now we're on an ABC up, right? And we can see that here. Big A, B, C. We've still got a little bit more to go. So we'll have to watch that one. But um, overall, you've got pretty good kind of traction here with, with Harmony 1. We are, oh, we are expecting a pullback in line with the rest of the space. Um, so again, you can see all this red right here. It's not alt season. That would be green whilst Bitcoin was red. Um, but we aren't quite seeing the same patterns. We aren't seeing the same kind of level of data. Now, if we actually do jump over to Bitcoin and um, to USD, why do I? why am I so confident in everything that's kind of going on. And that's because I've shown this a few times already. You guys will probably be familiar, but dissecting it all down, bull run 2013, 2017, 2021, 
you know, where we are right now is not too dissimilar to kind of what was going on previously, right? You can see right here, late October of 2013, you can see there was a huge pullback, right? Um, this was again, higher pullback than what we were with the initial pullback that we've had so far, right? So uh, we set the peak, we pulled back significantly, lost all that value, everyone was calling it a bear run. We pushed up, great, we're moving nicely, then we pulled back down, okay? And then things went parabolic, okay? Bitcoin spiked up. Uh, 2017, and you could argue that you had the same thing here, right? We set an all-time high, we pulled back. We set another all-time high, we pulled back. Very significant positions, by the way, as well, guys. And then we had that parabolic move taking it to the top. Now, we set a high, we pulled back. We set a high, we pulled back. We set a new all-time high, we pulled back. Okay, this is not something that hasn't happened before. This is history repeating itself uh, time and time again. You can see it in the data. And obviously, when we measure the distance from peak to peak, you know, we could also say that it's going to be December, late December, by the time you actually get that parabolic move. Or arguably, this happened in November. This happened in December. This could happen in January, following a little bit of an extended bull run. Okay, the data is also suggesting that as well. Um, one thing I'm pretty, pretty confident on is it's not a short bull run, okay? And if Bitcoin's already peaked and we're in alt season, it's short. It's the shortest bull run that we've seen. Shorter than 2013, shorter than 2017. The shortest bull run yet. And I don't subscribe to that theory. Not when everyone's also saying it's going to be an extended bull run, okay? So I don't think it's alt season. I don't think Bitcoin has finished with its uh, parabolic move yet. We haven't seen this parabolic motion that we've seen twice before that should be taking us up to fantastic heights. Just because it's happened in the past, though, doesn't mean it's going to happen again, but it is very probable, okay? History does have a tendency to repeat itself, um, until, of course, it doesn't, right? We have to acknowledge that it might not happen, but I think the probability is that it is more than likely going to go at parabolic move towards the end of the year, beginning of next year. My money, personally, would be on January, following the pattern that November, December, January, and then the next bull run, maybe it'll be February. Okay. Um, so I don't think we're in alt season. The market and indicators are not suggesting that we're in alt season. And um, I do think that Bitcoin has more to come just yet. So guys, I'm going to leave that video just there. Hopefully you have found this useful and informative. If you have hit that like button, I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap that bell, select all notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With that said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.